For some reason, September felt like it went by in a flash, maybe because I was mostly focused on one game, or maybe because it's just that time of year. Despite putting a lot of time into finishing a certain vivid monster collector, I did also find time for other things, whether it was starting my dive back into a story-heavy series I hadn't played in a while, or some demos that gave me different experiences, which had me excited to play more things throughout the rest of this year. So with plenty of excitement for the games I'm playing now, and the ones I'll be playing soon, here are the JRPG I played in September. Despite spending a majority of the month playing a different JRPG, my favorite JRPG experience in September was probably with Trails from Zero, as it reminded me of why I love the Trails series thanks to all the detail in its world. I'm still playing it now and having that feeling as I continue to play, as it really takes its time telling its story, but its events also manage to feel just the right length and never drag, which leaves you with a detailed feeling world that makes every bit it tells you make the story feel deeper, and also makes you want to seek out more things like its newspapers and books you can find in the world. It's also always ready to give you payoff for seeking these things out, with references to them in the story making me keen to keep picking up extra things, and while it's a slow-moving JRPG, the pacing makes me not really care, as every moment in this world feels really worth it. I'm also enjoying returning to its trails mechanics like S-Crofts and using Sepith, and understanding more of what the Trail series is as a whole. Seeing these mechanics in this older Trails games makes me feel like I'm seeing more of what the core of this series is, and it's always interesting to see things like its recipe mechanics in this older game that I had assumed was a newer mechanic, as recipe stuff is more popular these days, and with its battle system still being a solid turn-based one, I'm still really enjoying being back in its world, and while I know I have a lot more to get through since I'm at about 5 hours and still in its prologue, the deep world lets me look forward to doing that that should make for a fun JRPG journey. These are my updated impressions of the 5 hour mark, but if you want to hear how I felt even earlier into my playthrough, I did make a first impressions video that covers that. For now though, I'm very excited to keep playing in this deep world that is going to make my understanding of Trails even better for future games, especially since they keep playing ads for Kuro no Kiseki 2 here, and I look forward to hopefully giving it a review later this month as I continue to enjoy discovering its rich world. While I was lucky enough to be sent a code for Soul Hackers 2 before its release in late August, between making videos for other releases, I didn't get properly into it until near its actual release date, and because of that, I finished my time with it during late September in a slower playthrough, although nonetheless a playthrough I really enjoyed. I wasn't in love with Soul Hackers 2 like I have been with other games from this year, but whenever I came home and played a bit of it, it always felt like something I could get into easily thanks to its Shin Megami Tensei mechanics and how its Soul Hackers mechanics made everything flow together and the level of comfort I felt in it made the experience overall enjoyable, even if it does have some flaws that I made sure to touch on in my recent review. I do also understand why it's not for everyone because of those things, but it was a game I enjoyed enough in my slower playthrough, so if you want to know more, I recommend giving my review a look as I go into more detail there, such as about how I may pick it up again someday, which is something I felt recently seeing its patch notes with new demons added, so maybe we'll see if my Soul Hackers 2 journey finishes now or later soon. In any case, now that I've finished this main campaign, I'm glad I saw it through as a JRPG experience that was decently fun to play, and since it really did remind me of a lot of the things I love in Persona, it has me excited to play this month as Atlas does really make some fun dungeon crawling JRPGs. In last month's JRPGs I Played video, I expressed interest in trying the Diofield Chronicles and Adventure Academia's demos if I got time, and it was because you guys expressed interest in seeing me cover them that I made sure to do so, along with also throwing in Harvestella's demo when it dropped during Direct that made for an interesting afternoon of trying new games. The best experience I had with these games was with the Diofield Chronicles that I actually only ended up playing for about 20 minutes before I put it down as I liked it enough to want to play it in full someday. Its take on a tactical system was really interesting, and the way it has you set units in place and then have their moves happen in real time, and it felt detailed in the way it lets you swerve and precisely put them where you want them to. I like the look of the character designs, and the story intrigues me a little too, so I'll be saving it for later as a game that seems like its battles will be a unique take on the already fun tactical RPG genre, so hopefully I can get to it at some point. The next game was Adventure Academia, a somewhat more traditional tactical RPG which is coming to the west soon and has a Japanese 
Japanese demo that I tried. It was a little tricky on the Japanese front to understand mechanically, although story-wise it seemed like a good bit of fun as the apparently likable protagonist Alex gets ready to set out on a journey to find his father. Its battle system was unique too, mostly in the humorous way it has you pinch characters to pick them up and place them, and then actively distribute your MP to either rank up your characters or use abilities. I'm not fully sold on it yet, but that could be in part due to the language barrier, so I'd say I'm at least so curious about this colourful tactical experience after trying it, and we'll still be keeping an eye on it going forward. The final demo I tried was Harvestella's that I was very ready to like in spite of hearing a few bad things about its Switch version. Unfortunately though, it really didn't charm me as much as the games it seems to take inspiration from, like Rune Factory and Atelier, as while its crafting and simulation elements were fine, I found the world and its visuals on Switch to be really bland that made me want to stick with the farming based RPGs that I already know and love that have worlds that are much more lively. Because of that, I'm very glad there was this demo, as likely I would have picked this up with my own money and been disappointed, so if you're interested in it, I'd definitely recommend trying the demo to see if it meets your expectations before its November release. I naturally hope it'll be better in the full game, as I know some people are excited to try it, but since we are spoiled for choice these days, it likely won't be one entering my backlog anytime soon, as I focus on the many things coming up that I want to play and will more likely give good experiences. October is another busy month of JRPGs, although also manages to not feel too intense as it's busy with a lot of things I played before and therefore don't feel the need to finish right away. Nier Automata and Persona 5 Royal will be making their way to Switch next month on October 6th and October 21st respectively, with the latter also making its way to other platforms like Microsoft Ones and the PS5 that I'm interested in seeing how it plays on, and I'll likely jump into those for a bit to have a look and remember why I loved them and enjoy portability with their new form. I'll also likely jump back into Xenoblade Chronicles 3 for a bit as the new Hero Quest expansion DLC will be released this month on October 13th. This is mostly just an excuse for me to jump back into it as I also have other Hero Quests I need to do too, but this one looks particularly interesting with its special skill tree and the mech aesthetic of its new character, so I hope that it provides at least an hour or two of new content to enjoy in its world, and since I'll be purchasing the expansion pack for the first time, I'm excited to try the rest of the content that comes with it too. Finally, in terms of new releases, Star Ocean The Divine Force comes out on October 27th that I actually watched the trailer for while making this video and then downloaded the demo for. I don't know if I'll end up trying the full game, but I at least want to try it mostly for the fact that it looks cool that you can fly sometimes. If I like it, I'll probably pick it up, and if I don't, I'll likely use my money to grab an extra version of Persona 5 Royal, so we'll see what happens, but its trailer did at least get me a little curious about it, and since I've never tried a Star Ocean game, it could potentially be my gateway into the series. On top of all that, I'll be sticking with Trails from Zero that I'm still really enjoying getting immersed in with all its small details, and with this and everything else, I think I've got a fairly busy but also manageable month of JRPGs to enjoy. I'd love to hear what you guys are going to play and whether you're going to play a new game or a re-release, and either way, I hope you have a lot of fun as we dive into another fun month of enjoying JRPGs. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below what you played in September and what you plan to play this month. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below, and until next time, thank you, bye!